What's up guys, CP Morty here back with another mini review of the Adata XPG SX800 M.2 Drive. Our mini reviews are short, sharp and mostly to the point, but speaking to the point, let's jump into checking out this cool little drive. In the design department, we're getting ourselves an M.2 Drive. Really, there's not really too much going on here that is different from many other drives on the market, but hey, at least we get some pretty cool boxes. Thanks legit reviews for that picture. Nevertheless, the actual drive itself is pretty simple with an a data sticker with some information on it on one side with a fairly nice looking blank set of chips on the other. Thankfully however it features an all black PCB making it very stealth in most boards and should work with most builds out there. Also too if you're putting it underneath a heat spreader you should also too be cool because well there's nothing really to be seen under here. Overall, the design and aesthetics are really, really nice, as opposed to some more other budget options that don't come in with as nice designs. Jumping the specifications of this guy, we're getting ourselves sizes in terms of flash from 120GB through to 1TB, and today we're looking at the 512GB model and the 256GB model. With up to 640TB written lifespan on the flash, this guy's actually pretty good there. Now speaking of this flash, we're looking at 3D MLC NAND flash from either Intel or Micron, depending on which SKU you do go for, but honestly from testing I haven't exactly noticed any difference, and I don't really think there would be much of a difference between Intel and Micron options on the market. Controller wise, we're looking at the Silicon Motion SMI 2260 controller with up to 1GB of DRAM buffer cache, and other interesting specifications of this guy include operating temperatures up to 70 degrees Celsius and low power states of just 0.05 watts, which is actually really cool to see. On top of this, we get ourselves a 5 year warranty, which is really not half that bad. Now, that Silicon Motion controller that we did touch on is an 8 channel unit that has 4 8 gigabit per second lanes for data flow. On top of this, we also do get 8 NAND channels using their Gen 3x4 NVMe interface. So do make sure you have enough PCIe lanes on your CPU before going ahead and purchasing this guy. However, most builds out there should be pretty much fine with grabbing one of these. Whilst this guy doesn't offer a heatsink unit, there is still one available and if you were to put this on most modern high-end motherboards, you won't even need a heatsink on this guy. Tempwiser also too didn't notice any temps that were really that that bad so honestly it shouldn't need a heatsink unless you're really going hard on this guy which then let's face it all NVMe drives will need a heatsink if you are loading it up with some pretty serious workloads. But speaking of workloads let's jump into the performance and see what this guy really has to offer. In terms of synthetics we do get ourselves some really nice numbers. Whilst it doesn't beat out our record breaking Samsung drives or anything really similar like that it is still extremely fast and extremely pretty good actually. Real world applications also do benefit from the fast NVMe interface and honestly it just did a really good job. Again, whether it be in synthetics, real world or games, everything was snappy, responsive as we would definitely expect from a drive like this. On the plus side of this drive, we get ourselves decent specs and decent reliability. With large storage options available, we also do get really nice endurance for this drive and it just does an overall really good job at just holding everything together as a nice simple package. The price on this guy's also do not half that bad either for an NVMe based SSD. However, with that being said, on the downside, this guy is not the fastest device on the market, with again the Samsung drives and a couple others out there actually managing to beat out this drive, however, albeit at a higher price tag. On top of this, the people out there looking for a heatsink or a cool design will unfortunately be disappointed with this particular model, but as we'll touch on in a moment, there is an addition with a heatsink and better looking design. Unfortunately, this guy also too uses PCIe lanes, which will limit limit compatibility for some devices if you're running things like Crossfire or SLI or just don't have a whole lot of PCIe lanes spare. However, with that being said, that is a limitation of all NVMe PCIe drives, so don't hold it really against this drive, it is unfortunately though something we'll need to keep in mind. One extra thing to note about this particular guy is this drive's already been around for quite some time. This was actually originally released back in 2016 in December under a different product SKU. It's just been rebranded rescued and now is known as the SX800 and is basically just the standard drive without the heat spreader and anything else here. There's a few other tweaks here and there under the hood but really the actual difference between this model and then the model that was released earlier in the year actually late last year uh, isn't actually too half that bad. Now speaking of temperatures I do want to touch on temperatures for just a moment and honestly they weren't half that bad. I did notice if I was going ahead and doing a lot of reading and writing over the time of like an hour so for example if I was 100% 
percent load read and write constantly i did find it warm up a little bit just like every other nvme drive would however in day-to-day -day things like gaming using it as a scratch disc inside of premiere pro or just doing general synthetic tests i didn't actually notice any overheating and then general airflow inside your case should be just fine again if you are doing something more sort of uh, intense where you'll be seeing a hundred percent workload for 10 hours for example straight you will see some thermal throttling and that's really something we shouldn't really be concerned about because every single drive will experience that but if you are worried about thermal throttling and are worried about cooling grab yourself a motherboard that features a built-in cooling system or go ahead and grab yourself something like this ek water block or even just get the addition with a heatsink on it and you should be just about fine there but again, in my testing, I didn't really have too much of an issue, so I personally wouldn't be too worried when it comes to any thermal throttling with this particular drive. Price-wise, coming in at less than 98 Australian cents is actually not too bad on the price overall. With one terabyte drives not going for too high, and actually it wasn't too long ago that one terabyte NVMe drives were well over that $1,000 price tag, so it's nice to see that prices are actually really, really low. But who is this drive actually for? Well, I'm gonna have to say definitely a lot of people out there who want a solid and reliable drive that's not too bad in the price department, has a decent design and overall just delivers a really nice package. Whilst it does fall short of the giants like the Samsung 950 Pro drives, honestly in day to day tasks you would find it really hard to even tell the difference between the Samsung options and also to this guy where you're getting like one or so gigabyte per second transfer versus two gigabyte per second transfer. Again, unless you're doing benchmarks all day or you're constantly copying large super mega files, you're really not going to notice the difference between those two different drives. But with that being said, comparing it to more typical drives like your SATA SSD or even SATA hard drives, there is a massive increase in performance. And you will definitely feel that. It's also due backed up by a 5 year warranty and up to 640 terabytes written in terms of its flash lifespan, making this drive perfect for people who just want to set and forget. The aesthetics aren't also too half that bad with an all black PCB, and if it was hidden underneath a heatsink or inside of a laptop, as this guy has a nice low power mode, it would have no problems living there either. The five nines of quota reliability is also to a nice thing to have, but overall I wouldn't really have too many problems running this drive in my system as a daily driver. Thanks to the stability and rock solid performance I was able to get out of this guy, which was actually surprising out of this little drive. But do let me know what you think down in that comment section. Do you like this drive or do you think it needs to have a nice little cooler on it to keep it from thermal throttling? Let me know what you think down below. If you want to pick up one of these drives, find a link down in that description box. Thanks all for watching and I'll catch you all in the next one.